So, so essentially, if we put these things together, you're saying the neurons naturally get turned on by a signal of how many of these nasty metabolic byproducts have been produced. That's exactly what, what, what seems to be the case. It converts the analog appearance of these, uh, of these lipid peroxidation products in, in, into a digital memory that's then read out and, uh, and induces sleep when, when the fill level of the system reaches a certain level. Okay. So, so and, and just to say it explicitly for people, normally when we think about memory, we often think about you know, the connections between neurons and things like this, but we're talking about a system here that's all within one cell. This, this is one cell that's keeping track of its basic Basically, it's metabolic history by right. converting this analog signal in, into a, a digital signal. Right, and and I mean the memory. Uh, so, so so memory obviously has a neurobiological and and a psychological sense, but it also it also has an engineering sense in, right. in computer science. And uh, the memory that's that's in our computers and and in our cell phones, uh, no, known as DRAM or dynamic random access memory. That was invented in, in 1969 by Bob Dennard, who worked at IBM Research in, in the Hudson Valley. And uh, if you look at his patent, uh, the architecture of, of, of an elementary memory unit that can hold one bit of information uh, precisely recapitulates um, the architecture of the ion channel that we've studied. Mm. Uh, so Dennard's electronic memory is a two-component system. It contains a capacitor, that stores one bit in the form of an electrical charge, and then a gate, an access transistor that determines, depending on its voltage, whether you can read or write memory to the capacitor. So you can charge or discharge the capacitor. 